Ken Wickham. I'll explain how to create torque speed and torque current curves, what they mean, and how to use them. A Pittman DC motor's performance is characterized by the torque it can produce at a given speed and the voltage and current required to accomplish it. I will be using a Pittman 9234 brush commutated motor as an example for this explanation. To create the curves, we start by drawing the axes. The horizontal axis is for the torque ounce inches or newton meters are the best units for this motor. The left vertical axis is for the speed. Rotations per minute or radians per second are typical units. Now let's refer to specific performance data in the catalog to begin drawing our curves. The formula to calculate the theoretical zero load speed is equal to the input voltage divided by the voltage constant. The voltage constant for this motor is found in the catalog data sheet. The starting point of the speed torque curve starts at the speed axis, where the torque is zero. This is the value we just calculated. The peak torque for this motor is found in the catalog data sheet. The end point of our speed torque line terminates on the torque axis, which is also where the speed is zero. The peak torque generated is when the motor is in a stalled condition. This is a theoretical value, and a motor should never be placed in this condition, since it will quickly result in an irreversible failure. With our two points, we can now draw the speed torque curve. This line defines the output performance of our motor. Now we need another line that tells us the input requirements to achieve this. This will be our torque current curve. To begin this curve, we need to define the current axis, which uses amps as its units. The starting point of our second line begins at a point that coincides with the stall current and stall torque. Here, you can see the peak current value in the catalog data sheet. Next, we define the endpoint of our line, which is where torque and current are zero. Now, we can draw our torque current line. This line defines the input power of the motor and its relationship to the output power. This motor I'm holding is running at its rated voltage, 24 volts. It is running freely without any external load attached. This condition is typically referred to as no load, yet the motor still has its own losses to overcome in the way of friction and other things. Here we can see in the catalog data sheet that the motor's no load speed and current are defined. Here on our chart, we see a dotted line that defines this motor operating at no load. If I grab the shaft and impart a torque load to the motor, you can see the effects. The motor speed slows down and in an attempt to compensate, it draws more current. I've applied a two ounce inch torque load to the motor shaft. The motor is slowed to 5950 RPM. The motor compensates by drawing 0.4 amps of current. The catalog data sheet defines a continuous torque value. You can see this motor is capable of 6.1 ounce inches of continuous torque. Our chart shows the continuous torque of this motor exists along the solid black line. Any torque loads below this value to the left of this line are allowed to exist continuously. Any torque loads above this value to the right of this line are allowed to exist only intermittently. In fact, you should talk with one of our engineers to discuss our specific application. It is possible to run any of our motors at a higher or lower voltage than the rated value. In this example, the green line shows the speed torque curve of this 24 volt motor when it is running at 12 volts. I hope this explanation provides some insight into the relationship between speed torque and current volts.